guys, over here, Ivan Tapia, and welcome to another Success on Fire story right now with Saint Can right now from the UK. I'm very excited to be doing this interview. Um, you know, the first time I met Saint, it was close to two years ago. And uh, so you guys who don't know Saint, uh, we met in Orlando in, in an event over there. And since then, he made a decision to, to partner up with us and work together and his growth has been totally amazing in the company. He has taken UK by the storm. He has big organization in Asia, um, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka. It's, it's amazing what he's doing right now. And just so you guys know, he's only 25 years of age. Um, so, uh, he has a son, uh, five, month, five months all old. It's amazing what he's doing with his family and with all his leaders. He has people making over $30,000, $10,000 a month. And I'm, we're just excited right now for here for everybody, all of you guys to listen to Sane, his story, and hopefully it helps you inspire to get you guys to the next level. So um, Sane, I mean, uh, there's going to be thousands of people looking at this right now around the world. Um, can, can you tell us a little bit about your life before uh, the financial revolution, like how was your life basically two years before? Well, first and foremost, uh, I want to thank you, Ivan, for letting me come on this um, in this channel. It's a great privilege for me for me to be even on this channel because uh, I started with you about two years ago. And um, uh, when I was about 20, I got introduced to network marketing for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was more of like a, a getaway kind of uh, regime. I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was one of them. Uh, university students that was kind of confused that tried sport didn't work out tried uh, a job didn't work out tried to go into the gym industry didn't work out so I was doing a lot of things but nothing was kind of like the avenue I wanted to go on and um, when I was about 20 I got introduced by a friend uh, wasn't really a friend but like an old friend like a stranger um, she just said to me hey do you want to make extra money she sent me a Facebook message and I and I went to the meeting and um, for me it was just a, an eye-opener you know I saw some guy go on stage and he was making X amount of money um, and for me at that point I didn't know you can make money at that level without any kind of qualification or um, degree or you know any kind of experience um, so I jumped in straight away and um, after about four months I managed to be making my full-time income I started making that income um, on a full-time basis in the industry. Um, so since then, I've been riding that wave ever since. And two years ago, of course, working with yourself and uh, with this blessed company, this blessed, blessed industry, uh, I've been able to, you know, clear seven figures in, in my time within the company. So it's, it's been a it's been a massive blessing, and uh, only way is up, I guess. That's amazing. Seven figures he's earned over in, in 25 years of age. And so you guys know, I, I never cleared seven figures until I was 29. So you're you're going faster, bro. <laughs> um, and, and check this out. I mean, it, I got a question. Were, were, were you actually clearing the seven figures before the 23-year-old mark? With the, the, that is when you join our company. No, I had never seen um, prior in my first year. I was one of them people that you know. I I wasn't them, them, that kind of person to have like a bad story. A lot of people have a bad story in MLM, and that's naturally the cause. But I was blessed enough to kind of really shoot quite quickly, and mainly because I was very very energetic towards the industry. I wanted to recruit. I wanted to help people understand what it is we have to offer, and I got started. And after about my in my first year, I cleared nearly six figures. Uh, and you know, I always made you know six figures every single year since then, mainly because um, I, like I was driven to help people and then helping other people understand what I do. And, but when I joined um, this company, it was just, um, a whole new level. You know, I saw the conversation plan and I was like, if I did, if I can do this work, the same work I've been doing for the three years, but in this vehicle, um, I can make much more. And that's exactly what happened. So in, in the two years that I've been here, I made more than what I did in my. Um, five years combined more so in the industry if I was staying somewhere else. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, and that's a great point that you said about the bad stories because a lot of people see the success stories and they think or believe I need to have a sad story or a bad story. Yeah. And, and, and if I don't have that, I, I, it's, it's not for me, yeah. you know? Or, and, and, and then some other people think you need to be a person who never finished school, right? Did you finish school? Uh, just, no, I finished school, but I didn't finish university. Okay. No, 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 I just came out of university. It was my oh. final year and I was just struggling, so yeah, came out. Okay, awesome. Are you born in the UK? Born in the UK. Born in the UK. So, one, one of the, what, what, what would you say to a brand new person, if you can say maybe three 
success tips? Like what, what would you focus? What would the three things for the brand new person launching here, for example, in being an entrepreneur? Uh, I think as an entrepreneur, first and foremost, um, the most important thing is you have to go 100% in. Um, a lot of people, when they start entrepreneurship, they, they kind of go in half-hearted um, to kind of just see what it is. Uh, but entrepreneurship is like a sport. If you go in with one foot in, you're not really going to get anything uh, out of the sport. You know, you have to go all in. You have to put the, you know, have to put the boots on. Um, you have to jump in the deep end, and that's exactly what I did. And I've seen that work for me and many others that tried that. So that's the first thing they have to go 100% in. Because what I learned in my first year, one of my mentors said to me, 99% uh, is just like being a zero. You know, 90, 92% is like being a one. It does, it does anything but less than 100. It just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So uh, that's one thing, 100%. Second thing is I, I really believe people need to have someone within their surrounding that is at the level they want to be at. You know, without that, you can't you can't get the right path to go to that route that you want to go to. So if you're just in there like a headless chicken doing all the work, but you don't know if it's the right work or the smart work, you're going to be blaming the industry, blaming the people, and blaming your teachers, and blaming your parents, blaming yourself, whoever. So I've always known to have someone within my surrounding who's actually doing where what I want to do and at a level where I want to be. And the third thing is you got to work. Um, I think the, 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 they really you know, forget the network marketing yeah. part. Um, if you're willing to put in the numbers, um, I don't really care how long someone's been in the company. I care how much they've done in the company. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, they'll be like, oh, I, I was in network marketing one year, two years. I was an entrepreneur five years. But if you treat a nine to five, like an entrepreneurship, let's say for instance, if you've done eight hours a day, which you do in a job but as an entrepreneur, and you've done five years of that, man, you definitely you know, will be making money. Otherwise, you're doing all the wrong things. But eight hours a day in a job and eight hours in the day in the entrepreneurship, it's a it will open up so much more different avenues. And I've seen that happen firsthand. So you know, those are the three things I think most people need to, to focus on when they go you know, as, a new, as a newcomer. Yeah, definitely. So the next one, I mean, the, you made a great point. The second point you said, one of my biggest challenges, because you said surround yourself with the right people. In, in, in my experience, I always used to think that, but then my question were, well, who's the right people if my friends are all broke and my family's all broke? What would be the suggestion from you to those people? Well, first and foremost, uh, law of averages is always, you know, 100%. Um, you know, uh, there's many mentors and coaches that will tell you, find someone who you look up to, find someone who's successful, but naturally you don't know where to go when you're stuck around a sense of society. So my, my advice to anyone would be, get out of that surrounding. At some point, you might have to sacrifice some time that you have with your friends. You might love them, they might love you, you might care about them, but at some point, you have to understand that you know their average income becomes your average income. The way they speak becomes how you speak. You might see it right now, the way they dress, the way you dress. Um, you're not going to rock up in a suit if they if, if all their way is tracksuits. It just doesn't make sense. So if you come out of your surroundings one day, maybe invest some money into yourself, go to a program, go to a conference, go to a convention. Your friends don't have to follow you, but you might meet someone there and network and find a, a new friend who is at the wavelength that you want to be at. Um, you know, I, you might start, you know, spending more time with them, but it might, you know, definitely will benefit you in the future because you need to have that. Sometimes you need to. You know, play a bit of you know hardship to go go to both worlds, switch worlds. It's like a whole different world out there, and sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith and jump over. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, people want to know like how much has your life changed? So, I mean, this is income disclosure, so don't think this is all gonna happen to you guys. But I remember when I met Sane, uh, what car were you driving back then, bro? So I was driving um, a C-Class Mercedes. Um, it was. It was uh, it, was, it, was, it wasn't obviously the, the dream car that I wanted, um, but like I said, I always wanted to find a car that was um, powerful enough for me, And because uh, I used to have an Astra when I first started the industry. When I was 20 years old, I had an Astra, which broke down, and I was scared about driving it. Every time I got in, it was like a, there was a gear stick problem, and it was just about getting A to B. So that was one of my first goals in the industry, just to buy a car that, that functions properly. So. Um, now, of course, you know, within, while working in this company, I drive a, a GLC C3, so AMG, so it's been a... That's pretty cool. And he was telling me what car, what's your next car, if you're saying thinking? Oh, uh, well, one of my goals is by my uh, 26th birthday in January is to have a Porsche Panamera. That's awesome. Porsche Panamera. That's what I love about the industry. Your dreams grow so much after joining and being in the right environment. Um, 
has your living also changed? Like, were you living in a, in a small apartment with your parents? What happened also there? Well, crazy enough, I, I never, I wasn't really good at managing money. So I was buying cars and, and watches and stuff. So I wasn't really good because I wasn't taught. I, I had mentors that can teach me how to make money, but not mentors that can teach me how to keep money. Mm. So, you know, when I when I met people like yourself and, and, and David and other mentors that we have in this company, when I was 23, I was actually married at the time. Uh, I just got married before I joined the company and um, I was living in the loft of my parents' place. So just before I got married, I, I renovated my, my loft. It's like one bedroom, uh, like a studio, like small space. Um, and it was just me and her. And it was, you know, quite uncomfortable in the beginning because, you know, you, you have to understand that at times you feel like, um, you know, you're worth more than that at some point. Even if you're making money or not making money, you, you feel like you're worth more than this. And that's when you need to really look at yourself and manage your money and work harder and be in the right vehicle. So after about um, six months of being in, in iMarket's life, when I hit my first um, five figure check in my first month, I went into a new build and got myself a new place. And my mum was, you know, she didn't know it can happen that quick, um, so it was, it was really a blessing. And took my mom out. I uh, sorry, took my um, my wife out of that place, and now we're only like five minutes away from my mom's place. But you know, now we have a son um, who was born about five months ago, so now it's really convenient. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hopefully, you guys get inspired by this story. Uh, we're gonna have a future successful fire interview, complete interview with Saint Can. And all you guys follow Sane on social media. Very excited to be working with him and to be working with you guys in the future also. So see you guys next time.